Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is the door, okay? And the reason we're going to start with this is because it's a really good example for a lot of reasons. Doors are used all the time. You're going to need to use them, you know, really commonly. And yet, they're very simple in what they do, uh, but they're also relatively complex in how they have to act. So it makes a really good example piece for, for, for teaching how to use a, an animated trigger and uh, what we want to do. So it's, it's going to be good for us to learn how we're going to set up our animations and it's also good for learning you know, some of the benefits of using a simple animation. Um, though I personally wouldn't use a simple animation for a door, as I show later, I, I end up using a state machine. You know, simple animations can be used for doors and in fact it works rather well but it also illustrates some of the drawbacks of simple animations. So, so this is just a really good uh, general uh, introduction to, to using the animation system of Stingray. So I felt like doors were just a really good, good, good place to start because we're going to explore, like I said, the benefits and drawbacks of using simple animations, some of their power, and at the same time we're going to explore some of their limitations. So you kind of know when to use them and when not to use them. So, so okay. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we can do is we can select the door, and if we right-click on it, we can go f uh, find asset in browser. Okay, and here we're going to see all the components of our door. Okay, and um, what we're going to see is that we've got uh, the, the model itself or the unit, and we've got the animation clips, which are both open and close. Uh, later on, on the state machine, I end up making more clips because I want to have a little more control over that animation. Um, and as you can see here, uh, we're, we're, we're just opening the door, okay? And then on this one, uh, we are just closing the door, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to effectively walk into a volume, test to see if we hit that volume. If we did hit that volume, we're going to open the door. And if we walk away from that volume and are no longer touching that door, we're going to close the door. Okay, um, so that's the the end result, and the you know that's basically what we're going to be doing. Very very straightforward. Um, but in order to understand how we got this animation, we kind of have to look into Maya a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into Maya, and let's just see how I set this door up. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to jump into Maya. Okay, so here we are, and here is the door scene. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that we have this big gray box that kind of sits around our whole scene, and you're probably wondering, what is that doing there? So, um, what this is going to work for is being our collision box, and we're going to test when something walks into that collision box, and we're just using that as a to kind of know where exactly we want our player to hit for the doors to be triggered, okay? Now you could make this bigger or smaller and that'll just depend as far as where the character has to be for the animation to start playing or stop playing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this and we'll now see that the door is there, okay? Now the animations for the door are pretty straightforward. Um, I basically just have them opening and closing, okay? And all I've done is I've gone into the game exporter and if we look in the game exporter, we'll see that I have an open door animation that plays from 0 to 130, and I have a closed door animation that plays from 130 to 200, okay? And I'm not, I don't, I don't want to go into all the details of this, I just kind of want to show you how I basically set up the scene, all right? So you can do this for yourself, or you can, di you know, you can dissect this. Um, all, the, all the files are located in the art raw folder at the root of the project. So that's, that's what I've done in the, in the game exporter. So let's just look at that one more time. And notice that it's on animation clips. I don't use the model part, I use the animation clips. And I've set my export folder, you know, and I've set all this stuff up. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you wanted to add another clip, you just hit the plus, and you can add another clip and just tell it what frames you want it to play from the start of to the end of. Um, one other thing that I like to do is I like to keep the settings set to uh, save clips to a single file. It just keeps it a lot cleaner. It basically will make the entire model have all of your animations within it. You can also set this to multiple clips, in which case you would in import the clips separately. Okay, so you can do it either which way. I like to do it this way. That's just a preference though. All right, so just some basics on, on using the game exporter. And then once you're done doing your, your work, you're going to go ahead and hit export and it'll bundle everything that you need and put it into one file. All right, so, uh, so that's the game exporter. Now the animation itself, um, how I've set the, the project up is if we look at my outliner, you're going to see that basically all I have is the door collision set by itself and I've called it door collision. And then I have the frame also separated, but I have the double doors within a group. 
And then within those groups, I have the left door and the right door. And those include the handles, okay? So now all I've done on the left door is I've done a rotate, okay? So this is just doing the rotation part. So here's where the rotation begins, and there's where the rotation ends. And then I close it again back uh, to the original position. So it's just simply a rotation. And if you look up here, you'll see the only thing that's really happening is I'm rotating on a singular axis, okay? In this case, the y-axis. So uh, very, very simple, straightforward uh, animation technique. Um, by nesting all these pieces, I can, I can have a lot of control, all right? Um, and the left handle itself is also animated. So if we look at the handle, we'll see that the handle rotates down and then rotates up. So that's all that the handle is doing. It's just rotating down and then rotating up. And then I play the open part, and then I play the close part, okay? So uh, so really straightforward construction. Um, this shouldn't be anything too complicated. Um, so, so that's basically it. Now, uh, a word on materials. It's always good to have good naming conventions on your materials. So as you can see, I've got, you know, the door, but it's just called door material for the material itself, all right? Um, and then I've got, you know, door handle material as well, or door metal material and door metal two material, because that's uh, actually two different colors of metal. Um, so really, really straightforward. And once you do your export through the game exporter, so we'll just look at that really quick. So go to the game exporter. And here, you know, you would just hit export. It's going to export your FBX file, and you're just going to import that into your scene. Okay, once it's imported into your scene, you're going to have these parts. Uh, make sure when you do the import that you do include the, uh, the animation clips. So make sure you, you select the animation tab. If we were to go File, Import, uh, we're going to see that if we go to uh, the Art Raw folder and grab the doors and grab the doors simple, hit Open, I'm not actually going to do this, but we just want to make sure that this tab is turned on, okay? And it's going to create your skeleton, and it'll be uh, it'll be all set up for you, okay? Um, where you have your your materials, and you're going to have all this stuff. Now, if you noticed in the FBX file when I was looking at it in Maya, I didn't have a color on it. That's just because I set the color in here. You're welcome to do it either way. You can do your materials in Maya and import them, or you can do them uh, externally and just do them only within uh, Stingray. So you can do it either which way. All right. So I don't want to get too deep into the setup, but that's that's the basic setup. Um, I, I really want to focus more on on how we're going to control those animations rather than how to actually create them. Uh, I'm kind of expecting that you know how to do that or can look it up and, and figure out how to create animations in Maya. Okay. So. Now we have our, in, uh, our model imported, and we've got our animations done, and we're all set. So now we want to know how do we actually make this stuff function, okay? So um, inside of your unit, what you can do is you can double-click on your unit, and that's going to bring you to the unit editor. When you come to the unit editor, you're going to have uh, basically a preview, which is going to give you some view of the, uh, of the object, okay? And in here, we're going to want to do some very, very basic setup. If you look on the left over here, you're going to see that we have a door collision. We have the left door and the right door, okay? Now, the left door and the right door is so that when anything hits the door, whether it's open or closed or in the process of opening or closing, we want to make sure that if it hits something, it's actually going to push it out of the way. So if we had a ball near the door, it's going to push that ball out of the way. That's what these two collision meshes are doing, okay? And those are placed on the door object itself, okay? So if we were to go in here and in here and grab the left door NCL1. All I did was I went right click and I said create physics actor and that gave me the uh, the right door physics actor. Then I just set the actor to keyframed. It's really important you do this um, because you want the, the engine to know that it's going to be moving. Otherwise it's not going to work properly. Uh, anything that's actually animated you have to tell is a uh, keyframed animation. Okay, so that's the uh, the really important one. Uh, another one that's relatively important is to set this to box. Okay, if you don't set it to box, it may not move. Um, and by setting it to box, it's going to make sure that that collision uh, filter or the collision itself is is the the most efficient it can be. Okay, without being a problem. All right, so uh, so that's that's really all we've done for the collision actors. Um, and we did the same thing on the left door. So as you can see, it's also set to keyframed, and the box is also set to type. Now, the last one is going to be a static one, okay, because this one doesn't move. And this is what we're going to really be doing all the work with, is this door collision, okay? And we can't see it here because if you look, I have gone ahead and disabled visibility on the door collision, okay? If I re-enabled it, it would be there, okay? But I don't want to see it. I just want to use that box 
as the collision object. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know that it's there. So um, so it was imported, but I've turned it off, and, and I've also turned off cast shadows, so it doesn't cast a shadow on the doors. If I did this, you would see that it's actually casting that box's shadow, uh, and we don't want to do that, okay? So I've turned off cast shadows. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Um, just like before, I went right-click, create physics actor, and in here we can see that I've just set it to static. I've pretty much left this all default, but I did set the box, uh, the type to box again, okay? Again, because it's the most efficient. Now, once all that's done, well, all we have to really do is give it some logic to be able to know that when I touch that box, right, this, this, um, this door collision, right, this guy, Whenever I walk within this box, I want to know to start up the door animation. And when I walk out of that box, I want to know to stop the door animation and close the other one, okay? So that's what we're going to do. And let's take a look at what's called unit flow, and we're going to see how that actually functions, okay? And we're not going to work, well, yeah, we'll get into the audio, but that's, we're not going to get into how the audio is created, we're just going to get into how we're triggering it, okay? Um, but here is the real meat and potatoes of the door animations, okay? So all we've done is gone right-click, event, and physics trigger. And what this is going to do is it's going to look for a physics object, our door collision, and it's going to ask, has anything entered it or has anything left it, okay? I'm not going to use this one. I'm just going to use the one that I have below it. I just wanted to show you where to get it from, okay? And in here, all I've done is I've gone here, and I typed in the words door collision, exactly as the door collision is done. And then I'm just connecting the enter to an animation clip. And this is saying animation clip reset and play. And that's the one we want to use. So if we go right click animation, animation clip reset and play. And this is going to say play an animation or stop an animation. We can do some basic controls with this node. Okay. And let's take a look at it. Okay. So I'm not going to use this one again. I'm just going to use the one that I've created. And there's only some very basic parameters that we had to set in here. Um, the first one is the speed. How fast do we want it to play by? Um, well, we want it to play at the rate that I told it in Maya. I could speed it up or slow it down, and if I wanted to do so, I would do it through here. But in general, we're just going to want to leave that to 1, okay? The blend time is how long it'll take to blend from one animation to another animation if another one gets triggered. So this is really useful, especially in the case of a door, where we don't want it to just pop, okay? So if we had this set to 0, what would happen is when we left the door, it would pop shut, okay? We don't want it to do that. We want it to kind of figure out how to connect to the other animation that we're going to play directly thereafter, which is down here. So, so that's what blend time does. It basically just says, how long do you want me to blend from this animation to another animation of the same object or the same unit? Okay, so, uh, so that's what blend time does. And your loop is very obvious. It's either going to be true or it's going to be false. A looping animation would not be suitable for a door, but it will be suitable for our fans later on when we want to just make them play forever. Okay, so loop is there to be able to make something loop or not loop. In other words, start over when it hits the end. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what the loop function is going to do, and um, that's basically it. We also have to give it the, the, the animation that we want to select. And one thing that's nice is um, Stingray will automatically give you all of the animations that you have in your scene. So, uh, so as you can see here, all I've done is I've selected door, simple, door open. And if we look here, we will see doors, simple, door open right there. So, uh, so you'll just select it from your list and you'll have that animation clip playing in no time. All right. So uh, then all we have to do is connect enter to the play. Oh, I connected to the stop accidentally. So if I had this disconnected, you're going to connect the physics trigger to the play. All right. And the same thing we're going to do on the bottom. Okay. And we're going to say if we leave the object or leave the door collision, then we want to play it also. All right. So, uh, so that's, that's basically all we have to do. And that's, that's really going to work as well as we need it to. Um, and the loop is going to be set to false again. The blend time is going to be the same. Uh, if we wanted to blend a little more smoothly, we can set this higher. But you do have to be careful because eventually what will happen is you'll end up with some really wonky stuff if you set these blend times too high. So just be a little careful. Uh, you can experiment and try different you know, blend times and see how that works out for you. Uh, I found 0.5 to work pretty well, so that's what I left it at. All right. So, so that's basically what we're doing with our animations. Um, and it's, it's really straightforward. And the benefit of this is that it's really easy to do. As you can see, we have three nodes that basically handle all of our door stuff. The drawback is that it doesn't always work exactly how we want it to. 
okay? Uh, this blend time, though it's a very useful function, isn't really always going to work perfectly. It's, it's not always going to act like we want the door to act, okay? So we're going to explore why we wouldn't use this for doors um, later, but I just wanted you to see how to very simply set up a door and get it working, okay? So let's go ahead and hit the play button, and I just want to show you why um, the, the blend time doesn't work so good. So when I enter the volume, it's going to go ahead and play the animation. And when I leave it, it's going to stop it or, or play the other animation, which is door close. So pretty good. And if I stand in the way of the door, the door is going to actually push me out of the way. Okay, so that's, that's, that's why we added the collision filters to the door. Otherwise, the door would just travel right through my character. Okay, so where is the problem, right? Well, the problem is when I walk in really quick and I walk away really quick. Notice that the blend time has forced that door to automatically jump to the closed door animation, which isn't terrible. It's not even a problem, really, but you may not want that result. Okay. Notice that the door handles don't even move if I move in and out really quick, right? Like it's 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 clipping that animation a bit. So it'll it'll work. It's just not always going to be the perfectly smoothest way to handle this problem. Okay. So um, it's a very good way to handle the doors, but it may not be the way you want to do so. Okay. So we're going to explore a more complicated way to do doors later on in this tutorial. But for now, you have the basics of how to get a door working for your scene. So if you just need a quick door and you want to get it working. That's the easiest way, okay? Um, really straightforward and very simple. Now, um, as far as the audio goes, I don't want to not show you that. Um, all we've done is gone in and said on played from here. So as soon as this is told to play, this is going to kick out a position of played, okay? So it's been played, and it's only going to kick this out once, okay? So because of that, we can go ahead and play our audio. Okay, so here we have the sound effects door open being triggered when the door is, uh, when the open door is played. Okay, now if you'll notice over here, we're using something a little different to trigger the other ones. Okay, now the reason we do that is we wanted a little more positional control for triggering our audio on the door close and for the door squeak. So we have a little more control here. But um, that is handled, actually, in the audio clip itself. I mean, on, I'm sorry, in the video clip itself. So if we go into here and open, uh, open up this, uh, and we open up door simple open, okay? So now we're looking at the actual timeline itself. And as you can see, it just shows what we've exported from Stingray, I mean from Maya. But you'll notice here that we're actually, we've got this little green dot, okay? What this is, is an, uh, what's called a flow event. To add a flow event, you're just going to go right click, and you're going to say add flow event. And you can say new flow event, okay? And you can call it whatever you'd like. This is your event name. Just make sure you name it something logical. Um, we can call it, you know, test, whatever. Um, and it'll give you the ability to set the time frame either where you clicked or you can set it manually. So if I wanted this at 75 exactly, I can type in 75 and it will add it to exactly 75th frame. Okay? So once we've added that, what it basically says is that as my timeline plays, when it hits this, it's going to kick out an event. Okay? That event is what we're reading. I'm just going to discard those changes. I didn't really change anything that I care about. So when that event is triggered, we can do something from it. So if we go into our door, all I've done is I've used the external in event to trigger the squeak. Okay, so I got the squeak to happen right on the door where I wanted it to squeak. Okay, so this is a really nice, useful tool for triggering things within an animation clip. So your animation clip can actually trigger stuff. And this is how you would do it. Okay, so you're going to use this external in. And to get one of those, it's just going to be external, external in event. And the only thing you have to do is make sure you name this to exactly what you named your uh, external in event on your on your clip. Um, and it's really cool that you can do that because it gives you a lot more power with the animations of your door because now they can actually trigger things. So you can do all sorts of stuff with that. All right. So, uh, so, so that's simple animations and using the simple animation to trigger your doors and having them do some pretty neat stuff. All right. So uh, let's now move on and let's take a look at our next part of the, uh, the trigger tutorial and we're going to move into the record player next.